Hi everyone, what's up? I'm back with another video. This week's topic is Hurricane Katrina, based on this day in history. 15 years ago from today, Hurricane Katrina occurred. And here is a timeline for you. On August 23rd of 2005, a tropical depression over the Bahamas occurred. A few days later, this tropical depression turned into a category one hurricane and it hit Florida. Three days later on the 28th of August, Hurricane Katrina gained strength from warm waters. And finally, the very next day, this category one hurricane transitioned to a category five and it arrived at US Gulf Coast. Now you're probably wondering, what is this category one and category five? Well, hurricanes are categorized based on their wind speeds and storm surges, and also how much damage they do. So you can see category one does the least damage and has the least wind speed. Starting off with a 74 to 95 miles per hour, and category five could have wind speeds over 155 miles per hour. Storm surge, is basically the height of the water level. So category one storm surge could be from four to five feet and category five can go over 18 feet. Now looking at the different diagrams for each category, you can see the different damage that each category can do. Category one does really less damage, very minimal. There's no real structural damage done to the buildings, but there is a little bit of flooding. Category three has some structural damage done to small houses or buildings, and there is a little bit of inland flooding. However, category five has catastrophic damage. There is massive damage done to houses, buildings, and small structures are even blown or torn apart. Now let's look at some stats for Hurricane Katrina. With Hurricane Katrina, over 80% of the New Orleans city was submerged underwater. That is pretty catastrophic, right? Think of how high two-story buildings are. The water level for a Hurricane Katrina reached up to two stories high. Wind speeds went up to 200 kilometers per hour. And Hurricane Katrina turns out to be the most costliest natural disaster ever occurred in US history. It amounted up to $161 billion in damage. Two million people went without electricity. And there were 50 failed levees and flood walls. 2,400 ships and vessels were destroyed. 300,000 to 350,000 destroyed vehicles. And there were 2,000 casualties. Here's a picture of Hurricane Katrina's damage. Now let's go into what is a hurricane? We looked at Hurricane Katrina, the damage that it did, and some stats, and basically the timeline. But what exactly is a hurricane? A hurricane is a tropical cyclone. A tropical cyclone is a rapidly rotating storm. And the scientific name for hurricanes is tropical cyclone. A tropical cyclone has a low pressure center, but it has strong winds. And there's a spiral arrangement of thunderstorms. So note that these thunderstorms are in a spiral arrangement. Now, different places call hurricanes differently. In the North America and the Caribbean islands, they are called hurricanes. Near the Indian Ocean, they are called cyclones. And in Southeast Asia, tropical cyclones are called typhoons. Now, what causes hurricanes and how do they occur? So, hurricanes happen over a cycle. First step being, they form over warm ocean water of the tropics. So over the tropical water. 
This warm, moist air hovers over the water and it rises. This water that rises is replaced by cooler air. And this cooler air will warm and it will rise. This cycle of the warm air rising over the water and replacing it by cooler air, and then the cooler air gets warmer and rises, this cycle causes huge storm clouds to form and rotate and spin. Now, if there is enough warm water, the cycle will continue to rotate and spin, leading to the storm clouds and the wind speeds to grow faster and bigger. This causes a hurricane. Let's go over the parts of a hurricane. So the eye of the hurricane is a center point of the hurricane. Now you might think that the eye of the hurricane is the most dangerous part, but it's actually not. It has very low air pressure and they have no clouds and the wind there in the eye is calm. However, don't get fooled by the eye. The eye wall, which is the perimeter of the eye, is the most dangerous part of the hurricane. It has heavy clouds and it has the highest wind speeds of the hurricane. Next is rain bands. So every hurricane has rain bands. Rain bands are spiral bands of rain. And these rain bands drop huge amounts of rainfall. And what happens is that when the hurricane hits land, this is where flooding occurs. Here's a diagram to show you the three different parts, the eye, eye wall, and the rain bands. The diameter of a hurricane is measured from one side to the other. And the height of the hurricane is basically when the storm clouds become very tall. Now let's learn about some interesting facts about hurricanes. The letters Q, U, X, Y, and Z are not used for first letter of hurricane names. As you can see, this video was on Hurricane Katrina, which starts with the letter K. When scientists name hurricanes, they choose names that are alternated between boy and girl names. So the hurricane named before and after Hurricane Katrina were boy names. To show where weather forecasters think hurricane is most likely to travel, they draw cones on maps. And finally, to find out the latest information on hurricanes, you can look up the website of National Hurricane Center to get to know more information. And this is it for today's video. But I do have a question for you. What is your favorite subject? It's really nice to get to know what your favorite subject is, so that way you can involve more into it and do fun projects. So let me know down below in the comments what your favorite subject is, and see you next week.